um, here's now 1956, right, right after that, uh, the, 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 the first audiovisual uh, recording made for research purposes that we know of was in a, in a study group at the Center for Advanced Study called The Natural History of an Interview. And it, um, uh, it consisted of two psychiatrists, uh, two linguists, and, and two anthropologists. Uh, Gregory Bateson uh, had been working with Roish and Keyes at the, um, uh, the uh, Veterans Hospital, which is still there uh, in Palo Alto. Um, and um, they had by then some footage uh, that they were preparing as part of this development of a family therapy approach. And Bateson let the people at the center use uh, that footage and, and one of the pieces that they used was an interview um, between uh, Bateson and a mother uh, whose son uh, had, uh, uh, there was some question about uh, 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 the, 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 whether the son was um, um, hyperactive, maybe we might call him nowadays. Um, and uh, she had gotten involved with this study and gave permission to have Bateson interview her with the little boy there and they would film it and then study the interaction process. And I, unfortunately, my uh, copy of this, something went wrong. Um, I just found out last night here, um, and there's very bad interference on the sound. So I'm shutting the sound off, but this just gives you a sense of, of the footage. Only for research use, uh, but we're all researchers. It's all right. Yeah. It's a long time ago, as you can see. So there's the mother and the little boy. And he's got a toy airplane he plays with a little bit and a cap pistol. And Bateson is, is listening to the mother and watching the little boy. She's talking about the little boy. Uh, and they're sitting on the couch. And, and this was um, about a 20 minute interview that was filmed uh, with audio. And uh, uh, that's... Uh, uh, the, the what the footage looks like. Now what they did with this was to continuously transcribe, I'm not going to show you the transcripts, but they continuously transcribed one of the linguists did a phonetic transcription using phonetic symbols of every speech sound uh, on the audio track. And then there was a phonemic transcript that's more like uh, the modern transcribing of words that we can read as words. Uh, then there was a narrative commentary uh, written over time by Bateson, uh, kind of like uh, uh, field note commentary and clinical commentary by the psychiatrists. Every now and then they would say, well, this shows this clinical possibility or that. And so they just transcribed continuously the verbal and non, and oh, and then Greg, uh, uh, Ray Birdwhistle did a micro transcript of, of gesture, body orientation, gaze, all kinds of nonverbal behavior. And that was second by second, microsecond by microsecond continuous. So they had these these overlays of continuous transcript uh, because, and the reason for it was that they, um, we can turn the lights on for a minute again. They didn't want to presume that in meaning making in human social interaction, uh, talk was more important than nonverbal behavior uh, or certain aspects of talk or certain aspects of nonverbal behavior. So they wanted just continuous transcribing and then they would try to figure it out. Well, they spent 12 years trying to figure it out. Uh, the study was never published. 
it resides still as a big, thick manuscript in the Regenstein Library at the University of Chicago. When I was a graduate student in the 1960s at Northwestern, I drove down to the library and sat there for an afternoon with it in front of me and looked at it and uh, w fell asleep, actually. As I was, uh, um, it's very rough. Um, so, it, but Margaret Mead ended up working on it with Bateson, and 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 was the first systematic attempt to to study um, interaction from this point of view. Um, from then on, just quickly, uh, people like Albert Shefflin, a psychiatrist uh, who had worked some with Bird Whistle, continued in this tradition. Adam Kendon is another name. Uh, in what came to be called context analysis, how people in interaction form contexts for each other um, in the uh, 1960s. 